The day before inauguration, I was at the White House. We were doing hand makeup, and the First Lady, she looked at me and said, Hervé, do you know that tomorrow your name will be all over the news? I didn't realize the scale until suddenly my phone was going ballistic. Before I was under the radar, nobody really knew who I was, except the people in fashion. Not under my name, but I dressed all the other first ladies. My mother the other day, she said, I cannot find a picture of you in a bad mood. I'm always like, I'm always uh, happy, I guess. When I came to New York, I worked for Scott de la Renta. It was fascinating for me to already work on her inauguration dress. Afterwards, when I was at Carolina Herrera, I worked with Mrs. Bush a lot. And then there was a state dinner for Mrs. Obama. But um, now I am on my own. That's a new beginning for me. When you're on your own, I go from like different kind of customers. That's what I really, really, really enjoy. <laughs> I love this talk, I don't know why. What changed a little bit in January is when I designed the dress for the First Lady for uh, the inauguration ball. I never, 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 never met her before. And it was 10 days before inauguration. I received a phone call at 8 o'clock in the morning in my PG, and uh, I had to deliver sketches at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I wasn't prepared for that. It was around noon and I touched this for good luck and I said, please, please, I was begging for the muse to come and eventually they came because I remember I gave, um, I believe it was six options. When she saw the sketches, she said, well, what is appealing with you is like, I will be able to have something specifically made for a specific occasion. Would you like to do that? And I said, absolutely. For me, it was a big honor to dress the first lady this time under my name. Well, about the, the controversy of this White House, I don't have so much to say. I'm here to speak about fashion. The thing that I would say is that the beauty of New York and this country is a democracy. So some people want to work with certain people, some people don't want to. I choose to, uh, I choose to do it. If you forget about political or whatever, the very specific needs are so interesting. When you have a customer who is telling you, okay, I have a visit, a state visit uh, next week with the Queen of Jordan, or to see a Pope. I mean, who, for a designer to create a dress to go to see the Pope, it doesn't happen to you every day. It's a very unusual request for a very specific customer. You see, that's nice. Oh, yes, yes, that's very good. We do have a mannequin for the First Lady, of course. But I won't show it to you. <laughs> that's really like the naked body, you know, it's, <laughs> there is no... I'm still naive about it. The scale of a decision that is made between two people is going to spread like ink. It's like huge. Even if I'm not creating the clothes, what he's creating is to see what kind of message and how it's going to be perceived. Suddenly, this picture is forever in the newspapers, in history. You really have to answer the wardrobe of a woman who is going to be photographed all over the world. You walk on eggs. God knows you walk on eggs because you never know. When you are six years old, you think that you just need to sing and snap in your finger and the dress is going to be made. You will learn the hard way a little bit later that it's not so easy. But I took the challenge. <laughs>